Zambia is a landlocked country of 13 million people in Central Africa. The Anglican Church in Zambia has a holistic ministry that includes programs which address poverty, malaria, HIV and AIDS, governance and the empowerment of women. Women in Zambia are important agents in the transformation of their own communities. This is the story of how the Anglican Church in Zambia is working to equip and empower these women. Bishop William Chombo is Bishop of the Diocese of Eastern Zambia. He's also Provincial Secretary for the Anglican Province of Central Africa. There is a saying that once you teach a, a woman, you actually educate the whole country. But if you teach a man, you just an individual. So we have deliberately taken up a, a deliberate policy in educating women, empowering women, knowing that they're responsible of looking after their families. I know they're a small community, they're very, very little, but we know that with a multiplier effort, that will translate into a bigger community being developed. And at the end of the day, we are talking about a nation being developed because the women are actually involved. And they're the people who are looking after the children who are orphans, children who are vulnerable, and they're also looking after their own family because most of the men actually have been retrained, they don't have jobs. But if we empower women in their, small, in their little way that we're drawing, I think we're also helping their, their, their families. Julianne Stewart is ABM's Programs Director. She travelled to Zambia in 2010, where she learned firsthand about the challenges facing women. I guess we take for granted the ideas of gender and governance, um, particularly in Australia, where women have been very powerful in their own communities for a long time. Think things like the Country Women's Association, the ABM Auxiliary. Um, women obviously know um, what they're able to do and they get up and do it. It's not always been the case in other countries and so governance, um, positions of leadership, of authority, being able to lead, uh, to influence other women, to influence people generally, um, that's what we, we mean by governance and women in Zambia are very um, social and, and sociable and they're used to organising with each other but they're often not given much power, they're often relegated um, to less important areas of life. So learning skills to be able to take uh, reins of power rather than sit in the back seat, that's, that's what this program is partly trying to do. The Zambia Anglican Council coordinates health and development work for the five dioceses of the Anglican Church in Zambia. Its director is Grace Mazala Piri. It's now that uh, people understand what gender means, but uh, the first, when the concept uh, was introduced, people thought uh, women wanted to be equal to men and men were just like, uh, why should women be equal? But uh, with a lot of civic education and uh, a lot of um, NGOs trying to, uh, uh, to, to make people understand on gender issues. Um, we are seeing that uh, now when you go in a village, for example in our own programs, when we are putting up a program, we want participation from both women and uh, men. Women are now coming forward to take up, for example, a, a position of uh, a vice secretary, a position of uh, a treasurer, which is uh, something that uh, is uh, very, very encouraging in terms of uh, women empowerment. When I came into the office, my national anthem was each day that I wake up, how many lives am I going to touch? 
because this is my mission that I'm here for. So we said we are going to expand from the static to the outreach. And that was the beginning of um, uh, the empowerment programs in the Zambia Anglican Council. Good community development recognises that in any community there are always underlying assets and strengths. Grace tells us the story of the community of Kafure, which ABM visited in 2010, and of how the women of Kafure are sharing the skills that they have with one another as they seek to build the future that they dream of together. But we went to Kafure, and in Kafure we found a group of women who had already put themselves together and yearning to, to, be, to, to get empowerment. And they had very, very little money to start with, almost can't even talk about. And then when Julian looked at what they had done with the little that they had and the skill that the women this was like a potential to be developed, she, I think with a big heart, she felt that she had a duty maybe to assist the women. So within a week, the women came back and um, said we want to buy a machine. And because we had that 300, we were able to buy a machine, able to buy the material and uh, sewing, uh, sewing uh, kits. And, uh, it wasn't much, but... Uh, it did bring in a difference to the women. So with that little um, start, the women started the, uh, the sewings and started selling. Eventually, they started making tie and dye with the little money that uh, they had gotten, the machine there. And then uh, with tie and dye, they quickly, and it's amazing, went into poetry because uh, there was a, a pottery house that Zambia Anglican Council had supported with the help from uh, Episcopal Relief and Development. So they took advantage of the pottery and put in their chickens and started, started rearing chickens. And that uh, multiplier effect is something that uh, I think gives us a lot of hope that if you identify a potential that already is existing and the people feel they can do it themselves. You are just there as a, a facilitator, not somebody who has done it for them. My vision is to see that the people are able to stand on their own, that they are able to get involved in sustainable programs. Because we have seen a lot of, say, NGOs have come in, start a program, as soon as they pull out, everything collapses. That to me is not ideal. The ideal situation is to see what are the people they themselves doing, and you join them from what they are doing, and they are capable of doing, and then you join them there and you give them a push and let them go on their own and look at another community, give them a show, a push, and then it, just like that, so that people are able to continue with what they are capable of doing themselves and like trying to give them programs from outside. I think that's what I'd like to see. In that way, we'll be providing sustainable development. For us as a church, we look at this as a holistic approach where people's lives have to be touched both spiritually and physically. And we know that a person is uh, just not one aspect of it is holistic and therefore the church has decided that once we get involved in development and empowerment programs, we are doing missions in a very holistic way.